Welcome to the BBW Network Plus Podcast. This is part two and the continuation of Should Corporal Punishment Be Used in School? They still, because it don't work. It works. It but don't, don't work. What else is, you don't know what else is going on with that person. Yeah, but it don't matter what else is going on. We know plays a, Society plays a big part in a lot of stuff. Because yeah, it... I told you on, the, uh, on Facebook, I did not know what crack cocaine was until I was 15 years old. And I was a... a what a sophomore in high school yeah but just Why? because hold up just because, because i was not exposed just to because that. somebody just because there's something else going on with a child the whooping ain't gonna do him no good that's not gonna do him any good you just he beating on a child and and then, then you're not fixing the problem anyway that's my whole after thing. The first, after the first incident of paddling, you see all that information is turned in into the school board. Uh -huh. When a child is paddled in school, that information is logged and turned into the school board. Say after the first time that child is still giving trouble, the school board actually intervenes and re makes recommendations to the family, the parents, as far as what could be done. That's why in school you would see a lot of kids going into the ROTC programs and these, um, I don't know what they call them, but I call them kitty boot camps uh -huh. and stuff like that because that's they don't want to continue to have to paddle your child. We yeah. need to find something else that will work. And another, yeah. hold up. And another thing is this. Now, them white kids were just as bad as we were in class in school. They did all kind of stuff that never made it to the principal's office. They did all kind of stuff outside of class, drugs, sex, prank, all that stuff they did. But you know what? They didn't get the whoopings we got. They did. Only ones know, that will get know, only nobody. ones that will get the whoopings are the poor white kids. That you those were the why? only ones. But the and, and I, this is the thing. That it, that's the thing. You know, and another thing we need to talk about race does play a big part in a lot of this because you only hear about it bad statistics and data research data when it comes to black folks. Why? Because that's what's going to get people talking. And we live in a society that would like to make us think that race doesn't, ex you know, doesn't exist. You know, racism doesn't exist anymore. And that's so far from the truth. And right now, it's actually worse because, you know, the administration we have now. But at the same time, they're not going to talk about the rich little white kid getting paddled by the principal. Why? Because it doesn't get ratings. It doesn't get attention. It doesn't get people talking. We're going to talk about, you know, black people because, you know what? We make for good conversation. That's yeah, why. Exactly. That's, what it is. That's I, why I say as a as a group of people, as a race, we need to get it together. So because actually, uh -huh. if you want some some stuff to research, twenty nine percent of society of white people are on food stamps, as opposed to twenty five percent of black people. That's another thing. Well, of course. That's, that's what I was just telling you yeah. about, you know, attention uh -huh. to get the attention. So to be honest with you, there are more educationally inclined i'm talking about smart beyond measure black kids than there are white but you'll never hear about them uh -huh. because why because we live in a society where your race determines a lot of things exactly so if i'm sitting in a class and and i and i'm a i'm a white teacher or or whatever and i don't like a student if the student is taking a test and he happened to drop a eraser or he say turn around and say oh man i made a mistake let me see your pen right quick oh you being disruptive get out bam that child goes to the principal's office and say uh -huh. i would like to speak to my parent i would like to let my parent know what happened parent come to school know that, they know that the child had a legitimate reason to do what they a did. legitimate you, reason the yes, teacher the gonna fabricate the whole th that she's the gonna fabricate yeah the teacher can fabricate uh -huh. but they need to know that the parents did come the, see that's what's gonna scare them when an involved parent comes and gets really involved that scares the school board they don't like that yeah. they don't like it they don't like it when a parent that's why i say when a parent is deeply involved in their child's education oh yeah that that's a scare tactic to them because they know we can't do nothing to f all this up <laughs> we yeah, can't do yeah. nothing because these parents are going to be on our butts exactly and that's that's what we need that's what we need but at the same time 
you know your son is no good and don't get me wrong and i hate to say that about kids but you know when your child is bad yeah you know there's some so, bad kids out there i won't so, i won't uh, dispute you, you on that yeah you you put the teacher uh -huh. in a position to where she's like okay what are we gonna do with this one uh-huh because he's not gonna stop she's not gonna stop what do we do and then you have the parents that's what i was telling you the you know i, I can only give by an example i had a parent I had, when i was working at bright spots and learning and behavior uh -huh. it's a, a school for children that have behavioral problems uh -huh. and the thing is the parent was 17 and the child was 14. that's not much of an age difference uh -huh. and when you think about it the, the mother was a child herself when she had the child yeah the little girl so that plays a big part too. The parent doesn't have guidance instructor because if she did, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. so mm -mm. What, so what are you gonna do about the child that um, that doesn't have any guidance at home? Their parent might have not been a, their mom might have not been in their life. They might not know who their father is. So what do you do with that child? You work with that child. You get there's every child is gonna have some type of legal guardian. Am I wrong? whether they're in foster care, adopted, they're going to have some type of legal guardianship. The teacher should work with them and say, I'm the teacher, I'm here to educate, but I'm here to help you help your child. Uh -huh. they, give, they give resources. My resource counselor in middle school was Miss Kaiser, and she was the sweetest person ever. Uh -huh. I still remember her. I went to her funeral. That's how much of an impact she had on my life. They will work with whoever the legal guardian is to try and help that child. But when a parent shows a, a, the, the system, the school, that they don't care either, where do you, are they supposed to continue reaching out? Are they supposed to, you know, waste their resources on somebody who does not want to change or does not want to see change in their child? Well, I, and, forget about, and forget about the other 21 students in the class. Well, you know what? It's set up for the system is set up for you not to be able to handle disruptive students. And I don't even call them disruptive students, students that learn different. It's not set up for that. But what it do do is it deem them unteachable and that that's not that's that's not that's the way not to go true. there's no such thing as an unteachable well you person. can call it what you want but if you keep suspending the kid and saying he's disruptive and sending him to all these that that's basically what you're saying that's basically what you're saying that he's not gonna make it so do we keep him in the classroom and let him continue with that behavior I mean, you ain't gonna have much of a choice but to try to get him out the classroom because there's nowhere else for him to go or her to go. The problem who, is, you need to have somewhere. Blame? You need to and have. And who does the parent? Who does the parent blame for that? Well, I mean, hey, look, a person gonna do what they want to do. That's what I'm saying. So, so it's like, what do you do? It, you gotta change the system. The system, the system can change just like society did, but that's not going to stop all these bad ASS kids. I say it without no filter, without nothing, because I work with them. Yes, and I will. can tell you, we put labels on these kids to try to make it look like they are sweet and they are angels. And guess what? They aren't. Well, there are some very disrespectful and in well the proper word for a child that's like that is called a rogue child. But you and you're that not. Means that you're not gonna stop all the kids, but I guarantee you the percentages of disruptive students or students you deem that you can't really help or do nothing for is, is gonna go down. I mean, if, if, if I'm sitting in a class and, and you know, I'm an artistic person, most artistic people don't want you to be sitting there talking in no classroom. They wanna be out doing something uh, creative. They're creators. Well, I mean, all of us are creative, but they want to be out. I have an autistic nephew, and he does definitely learn different. Yeah. And he also, he does have some issues with his behavior. Most of, most sister... artists do. If you, it, it, let's just use this. If you go through the, uh, just let's look, let's look at singers. If you go through some of the greats, they all had issues. All of them have issues because it, a lot of them are either all the way to the left are they all the way to the right? It's really no in between with them. But 
you know, a lot of times the, uh, the school system, they don't have a place for him. Take, for instance, Tommy Davidson, the, uh, the comedian. He said that when he was in school, the teacher, he always got in trouble because he was always trying to be funny. But the mm -hmm. very thing that he was good at doing, they had nowhere for him to go to, to advance his, his skills. It should have been a place where you could put that disruptive child. And that his disruptiveness in his comedic uh, personality, it drove him to be successful. And there's a lot of kids in school that probably had the same prop that has the same problem he do. But we deem him, hey man, he ain't going nowhere. He's disruptive. You know, we gotta do something with him. Well, in this system that we got set up, there ain't nowhere for you to do. It ain't nothing for you to do for him but send him out to class or suspend him. So what are you gonna do? That's what I'm my, saying. My question from parents all the time is what do i do my child is disruptive in class they don't uh -huh. listen i say do you know your child's likes dislikes talents things that they you know what do you know about your child well i know my child likes music okay use music use what they like to uh -huh. bring that behavior down which means let them know that you can still enjoy your love of music but in order you all we all know music to be a musical artist to be a rapper it takes discipline yeah use, i mean to be anything use, it takes discipline. use the music to discipline them you have to let them know hey you have all these these you know ambitions to be this artist this rapper this singer whatever how do you expect to get that if you don't have the proper education? Use your talents to learn. Make it something to learn. Like my nephew, he's autistic. His thing is he likes to play games on his tablet. Okay. Uh -huh. but at the same time, he has homework. So my sister incorporated his games and homework together and made learning for him fun. Well, this that's what that that what she did should be in school. You they shouldn't even have that, to be having parents, that at home but all the time. Don't, but parents don't want to hear from teachers that their child needs to be taught differently. They think that you're singling out their child. They don't want to hear that. They would, to be honest with you, and I hate to say that's with everything in me, a parent would rather you tell them that their child is ADD than to tell them that oh, that's their child. BS, yeah. I'm trying to tell you, they would rather yeah. hear that than to, to hear a teacher say, your child needs to be in a class with kids that learn similar to him. Man, or look. your child may need to have some extra assignments because, or he may need you as a parent to work with him a little bit more. Like I said, an extension of the school at home with his homework because he's doing his homework, but no one's looking over his homework. So when he's called up to the classroom to answer a question, he gets mad and disruptive because he got it wrong. Did uh -huh. you look over? Did you look over his homework? Yeah, well. Did you go over the ones that were wrong with him? No, you just send him to school and think the teacher's supposed to do it. Well, look, and, and and that's another thing. Every just because a kid has a guardian doesn't mean that their parents are responsible. So the child shouldn't suffer because of that. And that's the last thing the teacher wants to do. I promise you. I have about four friends that are in my close circle that are actually teachers. Uh -huh. And they say that all the time. This child, such and such, has so much potential. If only the parents would work with us. Okay. Because the child, the child gets it. But at the same time, children know when they're bad. They know when they're disruptive because when a child is going to tell you, if you don't do this, I'm going to flash out, he's letting you know. Yeah, and, and the next thing, too. <laughs> they telling you I'm look, bad. Look, I, I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest with you. Wait till you, when you get children, you ain't going to be wanting nobody to power them. Who? You. You think so? I know so because I'm going to tell you. I have a 23-year-old, a 21-year-old, a 17-and-a-13-year-old a nephew and ask oh, them it's if different. they're I've, no, no, oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Let me reiterate. Uh -uh. Let me reiterate. Uh -uh. I have told, and his teach, his mom's teachers have told. My sisters told all the teachers if they bad, guess what? In my neighborhood that I grew up in, everybody had permission to whip me. Yeah, that's a difference. That's a, difference. that's a different. That's a total. That's a total difference. 
That, that is, is how totally I different. Will raise I have to disagree my children. because that's how I will raise because my because Miss Miss Evelyn that you go to church with, that your mama go to church with, those people had your best interest at heart. But you sending them up to that schoolhouse with uh, somebody that got all kind of other issues and all this, you don't know what's going on in their life. They don't visit you. They don't know you. They don't know that kid. They never been around you. I mean, the the, the I mean when i was in elementary like first or second grade like a lot of the teachers that taught my mama taught me and yeah. when, when hey when school was over and we go to church we see the same people in church yeah, they would walk past it, it was for but me. that's not how it is these days and these that's people why you go you go back to the, the age difference between the parent and the child that's two different generations Okay, that's okay. way different and, and you can you got a you basically got a woman with the mentality of a child trying to raise a child because she was a child herself when she got pregnant yeah that's that's true you have a lot of that going on that's what i'm saying so why don't we get to the root of the problem and then you got man one rule that i've always told parents y'all need to stop negotiating with these kids I'ma sit here as Cassandra, Renee, Fernell, and tell you that my daddy, Oliver James Fernell, did not ask me to do anything. He told me what I was gonna do. Yeah. And I did it. Why? I didn't pay no bills in this house. I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't feed myself. I didn't do none of that. And, but they got parents nowadays, they negotiate with these kids. They debate back and forth with these kids. You don't debate, you're going to go to school because I told you you're going to school. But I don't like school, okay? The people in hell don't like that, it's hot. Oh well. Why are, you Why are we debating with kids? Why are we doing this? That's the society we live in now. You have these kids that's walking around with $300 of hair in their head and $200 shoes and they failing. Because you know, I don't wanna hurt their feelings. You know how many times my feelings got hurt? It's ridiculous. It's like we need to start calling a spade a spade and a jack a jack. We need to do that. And back to this topic, corporal punishment is an extension of what is going on at home as far as structure and discipline for the child. Like I said, there are some kids you will never have to lay a hand on. But then there are some, like you said, just like they learn different. There's some you got to structure different. There's some you have to discipline. So how are you going to decipher for which one learn different and which one you needs to You find that out from the parent. So, and if the parent or the guardian or whatever does not know anything about this child, then you have a problem on your so hands. So Susie sitting in class being disruptive and she get to go she gets sent out to class or get get sent home but such and such get get a paddling how no, that's, how, that's, how that's how gonna work works. out that's not how it works you have to do something so severe to get a paddling on first first they're gonna try everything they're gonna have a parent teacher you know parent teacher meeting I'm, they're going to try that. They're going to try punish work. They're going to try after school detention. They're going to try everything bef to try to curb that behavior before it gets to a paddling. Okay. But so if, the parent, if the parent isn't on board with any of it, guess what? The child is going to continue to be disruptive. Well, I and mean. It's not, it's not only in that teacher's classroom. It's going to be throughout life. Uh, not necessarily until, until, until they get it not, i mean until those knees get dirty a few times yeah. before those ankles get broken a few times they it's going but why put your child through that well when you can look. start early when you can start early and between the ages why do you think kids do not start schooling i'm not talking about kindergarten and daycare schooling uh -huh. until they're around five or six years old because between the ages of one and four that's when a child learns to individualize they can learn they get the concept they don't learn it all don't don't they don't learn it all between right and wrong and what they can and cannot do why that's why because they want to be going into school they're going to be around people of all backgrounds and they need to learn tolerance they need to learn that they can't have their way no is a very important word kids don't like it 
Why? Because they don't want, they want what they want when they want and how they want. Yeah, because kids are looking, they're trying to find their place for respect. And from exactly. one to seven, they're in the recording phase as a human exactly. being. You're just watching so, and trying to figure out or, or how to navigate your way throughout the world at that and, point. And when they get to the point where there there's no discipline at home, there's no structure at home, that carries. Yeah. That carries. I say you you have a child that steals, guess what they're gonna do when they get older if you don't stop it? Well most gonna, yeah, most likely gonna you're gonna have a thief. <laughs> You they know. Go, exactly that's what i'm saying you have a, ch a child you notice that's like in third or fourth grade she's wanting to wear tight clothes and you and you don't do nothing to curb that behavior what's the chances of her becoming a teenage mom yeah you know what hey, that's why it's structure <laughs> hey I, look i'm gonna let you have the last word but i'm gonna say this though one more time when you get a child nope. <laughs> you ain't gonna want nobody you ain't gonna want no principal to be hitting on your child I'd rather the principal call me and let me go do it. In yeah, front of the I, now, now maybe, but you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna principal call back say your child disrupted. I'm finna put, I'm finna put some wood on them. <laughs> they ain't finna. I promise you, you gonna be like, but wait, no, this wait. Is the thing, the first no, my first question gonna be like, what she did. I might and ask you what you thought. No, nah, I ain't gonna even ask what they some, did. If they say my daughter or some my, my son or whatever braced up to a teacher and want to fight, hold up. She gonna get it. I'm coming. You see, the principal gonna do it in his office where nobody can see. I'm gonna do it in front of that class. If you wanna be an ass, I'm gonna show you how to be an ass. Yeah. That's just, and it does, like I said, parenting doesn't take a child. You know, you if you're an adult, you can get the concept of parenting. It's common sense. Children have no, they don't have no guidance until you teach it to them. They don't have no structure until you teach it to them. So it doesn't take being a parent to know how to raise a child. You got to be an adult with common sense to raise a child. That's true. I have an older sister and a younger brother. I'm in the middle. And I can tell you. Oh, Lord. That's why you got middle, you got middle child. child syndrome. I don't have, oh, no. They got the same things. In, the, in fact, my sister got it worse than I did. <laughs> my brother too. <laughs> so, but no, I got whipped for the stuff he did. So, yeah, I don't have middle child syndrome. We all got our butt tore up. Okay. And I can see here and I can tell you as we end this podcast, I'm not saying this is just my personal experience. Due to the structure that I had, the, the you know, the discipline that I had, I could stand here at 42. And this is not to disrespect or step on anybody's toes or say anything negative about anybody. I have never sat in anybody's jail cell. My parents did not have to look for me in the streets and nightclubs or nothing. Like I said, I'm 42 with no kids. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I did what my education was more important to me. And I knew that what my parents were doing when they whipped me for cutting up in school, it wasn't because they wanted to say, I'm the parent, I make the rule. No, they wanted to show me your education is important. Okay. You need it because we won't be here forever. That's I true. need to give you the tools that you need so that when I go on, you can make it in this world. That's it. And, then your, and then your kids can make it in this world. Exactly. So, but I enjoyed this podcast. Well, I encourage parents do whatever you have to do to get involved in your kids' lives as far as education, the friends they communicate with, all of that, because all that plays a role in the person that they'll become later in life. Well, there you have it, folks. I'd like to thank Miss Cassandra for coming on the show and sharing with us her perspective on corporal punishment. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people that agree with corporal punishment, even though I still don't. Trust me, there is a lot of people that agree with her. Anyway, fam, we done beat this horse enough, which brings us to the end of this particular episode. I would like for you to subscribe and share this podcast. I would also like for you to go to the BBW Network Plus Facebook group and hit us up over there. Also, check us out on Instagram. Until next time, fam, be happy.